I just finished a repair uh, alternator swap out on a Saturn Ion today and uh, I have to give a little bit of an explanation on this. I normally wouldn't do a, a video on something this simple but I had to look it up, Google it, YouTube it and uh, I spent way too much time looking for the info I, I wanted and it was either just misinformation or straight up lies. So what I was looking for, I knew it was a most likely a bad alternator. The battery light came on. But I wanted to, the, the one thing that could be faulty is uh, power from the field wire. Typically in older alternators, the field wire you should, with the key on, you should see 12 volts. With this car, um, key on, I got nothing. Um, I'd start the car and I was reading 5 volts. So I tried to find out, tried to confirm, is that proper? Like, is it really a 5 volt input? And through little pieces here and there, like uh, just different forums, I was able to figure out that yeah it, it actually is right um, but that was my question what should the voltage be on the field wire and when can you get a reading and that's where I was getting either misinformation or lies uh, from people claiming to be Saturn specialists they were completely wrong with their information so with this particular car, and I, I suspect with a lot of these new cars, it's, uh, it's, it's become a logic circuit. Uh, 5 volt is a... Well, uh, th th that's a logic level. So... The, the technology changed quite a bit, I guess. I suspect most cars are like that now, but I don't do a whole lot of, well, I seem to work on a variety of cars. The point is, there is no video that actually specifically addresses this issue. So I, it, the video is how to, on a 2004 specifically, uh, Saturn Ion, how to remove the alternator, how to test, because it's a three wire circuit um, I just talk about exactly how to test to make sure to be sure it's the alternator before you replace it because these things are three hundred dollars when I got the price I said is this thing made out of gold but that's the price anyway that's my story this is why I'm posting this video the story on this car, I got a text on Thursday uh, saying, hey, my battery light uh, came on. So I replied immediately. I said, well, don't delay. Get it straight to a shop because it's going to be an alternator problem. And I didn't hear anything back. Uh, I saw this person on Sunday and I said, so what's happening with the car? Uh, I guess the battery light went out for a bit, but now it's about, it just came back on. I said, well, okay, well, get it over to me. Don't delay. Don't stop for anything. Like, do what you have to do and, uh, and get, get it here. So, yeah, later in the afternoon, I got a text saying, hey, I'm two minutes away uh, and my car won't start. So she got it, uh, she, she got uh, went quite a ways just off the charge of the battery but she ended up stopping for gas around the corner here and uh, that was the end of it so I drove out there put uh, put the jumper cables on gave the battery a charge started up um, and now today is Monday I finally got I, was, I couldn't get anything it's too late yesterday to track down an alternator. These things are 200 and anywhere from 270 to 320 was the range. So I went with the cheapest one, and that's a refurb, not a not a brand new. 
So I picked that up this morning in the rain. Um, the difficulty level on something like this is like a one and a half out of ten. Ten being extremely difficult. Um, you need a wrench, a flathead screwdriver, and a, uh, and a three eighths uh, flex bar. I've got this 2004 Saturn Ion. Um, got a bad alternator. I couldn't really find a whole lot online, so this is why I'm doing the video. Uh, it'll be mostly uh, to reinstall an alternator and put everything back together because I already tore into it. Uh, if you don't know where to go, with, if you don't know exactly where to put your uh, 3 8 uh, uh, flex bar for the uh, tensioner pulley, uh, you're completely out of luck with this thing. But it just takes the uh, the square socket, so I think you can see that. And once it's in there, you can take the tension off pretty easy. To get the belt off. And that's as simple as that. Now I wasn't totally sure that it was the alternator that failed. Uh, where am I? Uh, I do have, I did have 12 volts on the output, but uh, I wasn't getting a reading of these two wires. One is the This goes in here, of these two wires, one is the field wire and one is uh, um, a sense, basically to, for the battery light. Now, normally a field wire would have 12 volts when the key is on, and that's what tells the alternator essentially to start working. These two wires, they don't go, or the red wire, which should be the field wire, it doesn't go to 12 volts. Uh, it actually goes directly to the ECM. And uh, I only get a voltage off it when the engine is running and I'm reading 5 volts. So that's, that's something different. I haven't seen that before. Which made me wonder if maybe it was a wiring issue. And that, uh, and that possibly there is a, not a bad connection, but a corroded connection. Which would, you know, tell me maybe that's why I was getting 5 volts, but because I knew this alternator, it was most likely the alternator anyways, uh, I went ahead and bypassed this, and I ran a jumper, uh, giving it 12 volts here. Didn't matter, didn't change anything, I still had no output, so that's how I knew for sure that... Or, yeah, that's how I know for sure that this should have... 5 volts on it and that is proper Another weird thing about this car. Batteries in the trunk. And before I go ahead and take that alternator out, I'm gonna disconnect the battery. That would be smart. So once you get the belt off, it's just three bolts, 13 mil wrench. 
Ugh, three really long bolts. Connection is 13 mil as well. Yep, it is. Oh, come on. So this guy down here is a, it's a 13 mil. Which way is going to clear? Can I come out this way? You gotta be kidding me. So that's it. It's not easy. Boy, this is on the tag to the alternator. That doesn't really instill confidence. I was getting a lot of um, were a lot of questions about these things. Um, seems to be a fairly common problem with this car. And what a lot of people, I think, they're having issues with that field wire. But anyway, And it's starting to rain again. It's been doing this all day. Rain for a couple hours, stop for an hour. another 10 minutes here to get it done. I could bring it in, but I'd have to do a whole bunch of shuffling around. Oh, man. Right. Okay, I'll stop here. back on.
belt back on. This square is going to get a little tricky. Perfect. So this is where other people were struggling. There's not really enough room. I can show it. <laughs> See, it won't clear like that. But I can come in sideways and I can, I can work it into that squared hole. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, it's doable. Okay, so check the actual voltage. Come on. I need a ground that works. Fourteen point five, yep, we still have the ground. These two holders out just to get so I can move these wires out of my way. Just a matter of putting them back in. Is that right? This so this guy just like this. There. See, I don't know why they put this this clamp with the head on the bottom. But it's by design, I can't change it. Because it's notched. Makes it a little more difficult, but it's doable. So this just goes in. These guys go in here. Some difficulty it goes. There we go. Those line up. Filter looks pretty clean. Goes like that. it I think this car might have had other covers uh, they they got lost I'm guessing and we're done <laughs>